This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, July the 23rd. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks so much for tuning in. Satellite image this morning shows uh, much like yesterday morning. We have basically clear skies over much of the state of Alabama. A few clouds there in the northwest section coming across uh, the northern part of uh, Mississippi. But uh, we're still under the influence of a large high-pressure system centered over the Atlantic that is nosing in across the southeastern U.S. and the Gulf of Mexico. I do note, though, that we do have a front to our north, and that front looks like it could get down into this area. This is the time of the year when we don't often see fronts uh, make it this far south, but it looks like this one could. The upper air pattern uh, features this big ridge that's uh, migrating to the uh, west a little bit. Uh, however, uh, the National Weather Service in Birmingham decided to keep a uh, heat advisory in effect generally along and to the west of I-65. There's a little bit closer look at uh, the heat advisory for central Alabama. Looking for uh, the highs uh, to be probably in the mid-90s, but that puts the heat indices with the humidities around uh, 103 to 106, and that's getting into the, the uh, danger range. Temperatures across the area, generally in the uh, lower and mid-70s across the area, but also notice the dew points generally in the lower 70s, uh, some at Tuscaloosa in the mid-70s. Ouch, that's just very humid. Radar is fairly clear across uh, much of the southeastern U.S. We do have a few showers along the Gulf Coast, and then to the north you can see uh, uh, showers and thunderstorms along the front. QPF-wise, we're looking at on the order of... Uh, about one to two inches uh, over the area. This is through Friday morning. Remember, it won't be uniform like this. Uh, you know, some some people will actually could get missed completely, but uh, I think there's a pretty good chance on Monday and Tuesday, and then again on Friday. The Storm Prediction Center has a slight risk over the eastern Great Lakes area, from a little to the southwest of Chicago over to the mid-Atlantic states. On day two, there's no slight risk areas, just a couple of marginals uh, over uh, New York and down into eastern Kentucky and then across the uh, Dakotas primarily and a little bit of uh, Minnesota. On day three, the slight risk is over Minnesota, parts of Wisconsin, and the eastern uh, part of uh, South Dakota. The tropics in the Atlantic, things are just chugging along nice and quiet with nothing expected uh, for much of the week ahead. In the uh, eastern North Pacific, however, they're chugging along all right. We've got a nice train of these things. We've got Greg, Irwin, and Hillary. Quickly, uh, there is, uh, and they're all expected to remain out to sea. There is the track for um, Greg. There's the track of Irwin. Irwin might achieve hurricane status on Tuesday. And then there's the track of Hillary, and there's a potential that Hillary may actually achieve major hurricane status uh, by the, the about the middle of the week or so. All right, the 06 CGFS model run, and the ridge is pulling back a little bit as we're seeing these troughs come across southern Canada and then drop in to the eastern part of the country, and that's good. Uh, however, I do see why uh, the National Weather Service decided to keep the heat advisories in effect over the uh, western part of uh, Alabama, um, the west, central, and northwest part, is because the uh, thickness values are not falling real quickly. So once again, just one more heat day. And it does look like uh, and kind of an interesting little pattern here with the donut there in the middle. Looks like scattered showers once again is a possibility. Uh, to explain that donut just a little bit, if you look at precipitable water values, it does look like precipitable water values are down over central Mississippi. So that might be a good reason not to put showers in that particular location. For Monday, the upper trough uh, is still there and uh, is certainly gaining some strength. Again, as those traveling troughs move into, the, into that trough and help to reinforce it. We see the front getting down into the area Monday and uh, bear, uh, basically, I think, creating a little better chance for showers and thunderstorms. I do note that the uh, precipitable water values are highest over the south part of the state, and they do show a little bit of a minimum on the order of about 1.5 inches uh, over the east central part of the state. So that could mean a little bit less showers over the eastern central part of the area. Tuesday, the front still in the area uh, as the upper trough remains uh, in the uh, situated across the southeastern U.S. So the frontal boundary remains in our area as it's beginning to wash out. And once again, precipital water values are pretty high. So I think Monday and Tuesday being two of the better days for rain uh, to occur. 
We see a nice trough coming across Canada uh, on Wednesday, and uh, while the ridge from the west seems to nose in a little bit, uh, we do note that that's, uh, that trough up there is actually helping to produce a low-pressure area in Canada, but a nice front trailing down into a low over parts of Nebraska and Kansas. On Thursday, uh, that uh, trough moves across to southeastern Canada, but it does help to dig in and push that ridge back uh, to the um, west a little bit, and the front gets a little bit closer on Friday. Note that uh, on Friday, the precipital, pardon me, on Thursday, uh, the, the precipital water values are basically um, uh, not up there just yet on Thursday, but the trough continues to uh, strengthen on Friday, and as it does, that front gets closer on Friday, so it looks like Friday could be another uh, day where we'll see numerous showers and thunderstorms, and certainly if the precipital water values are correct, then uh, we're going to see uh, some uh, numerous showers and thunderstorms on Friday. Saturday, uh, the trough axis uh, is not quite through us by midday, so I think that keeps some showers as a possibility for at least the first half of the day. We're verging out onto voodoo country, though, so and it does. Uh, I do note the precipital water values are really pushed down to the Gulf Coast, and then by Sunday, the trough axis has moved by and the precipital water values are really dropping over our area. This looks like this could be one of those situations where we have some very nice blue skies and dew points drop into maybe the lower 60s. That would certainly be great. And of course, there would be little in the way of showers with uh, that kind of pattern. Looking out into voodoo country, uh, the GFS is very bullish for the first uh, two-thirds of the extended period for keeping the trough over the eastern part of the country. I do note that uh, the trough axis is a little further west, uh, so that that's good. That keeps us in the cooler air and with no, uh, no excessive heat. We see the same pattern around the 4th of August. Uh, the pattern becomes a bit convoluted with some ridging uh, going on around the 7th of August, and that's to be expected. After all, August is one of our hotter months. That'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. James Spann should be back in the saddle with the next edition first thing on Monday morning. Stay tuned to the blog for notes on Alabama's weather. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day. Stay cool. Be very respectful of any showers that form. Lightning is very dangerous.